Your Excellency, Ambassador George Salim, Honorable Excellencies, Diplomatic Corps, President ICD, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. And assalamu alaikum, because many people are sitting here are Muslims. Peace and blessings be upon you. I'm honored and I'm thankful that a Pakistan's ambassador has invited me to this international symposium on culture diplomacy. I deeply appreciate for the kind words used for my introduction. Thank you very much indeed. This kind of culture international symposium create a focus of interaction between people of different countries, thus laying the groundwork for forging bonds and strong foundation of trust between people and different nations. The Islamic Republic of Pakistan and their world have enjoyed a long historical and enduring friendship in business, culture, armed forces, and religion since the establishment of Pakistan in 1947. The influences that our two rich cultures have, have on each other are significant. Throughout the history, the generosity of the Arab world made a massive contribution to Pakistan's economy. Today, I would like to highlight my stake of a very important issue regarding the world peace. And that's my stake. You know, everybody kind of has his own stake, so that's my stake, how I see things. As we all know, the world stands on a brink of a catastrophic global war, where there is a fear of nuclear weapons could be used or utilized, resulting in a devastating effect. Therefore, I condemn the practice of regime change as previous stances in Iraq and Libya, which had terrible consequences for the world, peace, and stability. Let me tell you what happened when some forces tried to bring the so-called democracy in Libya and Syria. Three countries destroyed, over five million people confirmed killed, 25 million people at least displaced. A catastrophic humanitarian situation occurred. Most of the refugees are also persecuted. For me, as a commissioner for UN Affairs, it is also very disturbing because those wars are not in conformity with the UN Charter. In Syria, I believe that peaceful negotiation can only occur if all concerned countries, including the West, the Syrian government, Russia, Iran, the Arab world, and Turkey, think on one platform, and that is to preach and practice peace with absolute justice and forgiveness. On that note, I would like to quote the Holy Quran, chapter 16, verse 90. Really, Allah enjoins justice and doing of good to others and giving them like kindred. And now, 
it is not only the Muslim world who is destroyed and is always at stake. Rather, everyone is a target of terrorism. As we have witnessed recently, what happened in Paris, Nizza, Munich, and Brussels. Those attacks can be only described as an act of horrific brutality and are completely against the true teachings of Islam. I would like to highlight that the Holy Quran entirely condemns the actions of all extremist groups such as ISIS. The Holy Quran states, whoever kills an innocent person, human being, it shall be as if he has killed all mankind. It is a must know that we all together for preserving the world peace and achieving economic and social integration, gather a union and call on the United Nations and the major world powers to act with justice and strive for long-lasting peace in the world. Thank you very much.